Hi everybody, my name is Lucy Weston and I have just taken over from Louise as the new Director of Safeguarding here at FRAM. The presentation that I've got for you today is all about the changes to keeping children safe in education for 2020. So these are all changes that you do need to be aware of and you do need to make sure that you read part one and understand it in full as well. I'm also going to go through some basic safeguarding procedures if you have any concerns or anything about a child in school. If you have any questions or anything at the end of the presentation, please just give me a call or drop me an email. Uh, no matter how silly you think the question is, it's absolutely fine. I'm always available if anybody has anything that they want to ask. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the definition of safeguarding. So when we consider safeguarding, all you need to be aware of is that it is the action taken to promote the welfare of children and protect them from harm. Um, essentially, it is making sure that all students are safe, happy and that they are able to learn. Safeguarding is also protecting children from abuse and maltreatment, preventing harm to children's health or development, ensuring that children grow up with the provision of safe and effective care and taking action to enable all children and young people to have the best outcomes possible. Safeguarding is everyone's responsibility. We all have a duty of care to ensure that all children are safe, happy and able to learn. Child protection is part of the safeguarding process. It focuses on protecting individual children identified as suffering or those who are likely to suffer from significant harm. If you have a concern about a student and need to speak to somebody, the key members of staff in school are myself, Jane Rayson, who's the deputy head teacher, Fran Ward, assistant head teacher. All of the pastoral managers are DSL trained and will be able to offer advice and support as well. Kim Oldham, who is our SEMH lead, and Mark McCready, who is director of behaviour. The four main categories of abuse are neglect, physical abuse, emotional abuse, and sexual abuse. Um, on the screen now, you will see some of the potential presenting factors that a child may have, which could indicate that they are suffering from some kind of harm. If you are concerned about a student at any point, it is really important that you do not let that child go home before speaking to a designated member of staff. You must report your concern immediately, and this must be done in person, even if it means you need to get cover for your lesson for five or ten minutes. You'll then be asked to complete a CPOMS cause for concern record, and if you need any help with CPOMS, please speak to myself or Jane, but we will be doing some training on this in the near future. Please, please do not report a cause for concern via email. If you're sending an email to a member of staff who is not at their computer, it could be a significant period of time before that is then read and actioned, which could mean that the child is placed at further harm. So please make sure all concerns are reported in person. OK, on the screen now is a screenshot of the CPOMS home screen. So most of you know how to use CPOMS. The categories have changed this year. For teaching and support staff, you will be able to record cause for concern and any abusive peer-on-peer -peer behaviours that you may witness in the classroom or on duty. Um, different members of staff have different levels of access, but if you need any help with CPOMS at all, please do come and see me, but you will be getting some training on this in the near future. Here are some examples of CPOMS good practice. So on the left hand side, you can see some do's. Complete records in a timely and accurate manner. Please make sure that you keep all information factual. Please ensure that you write professionally and check your spelling. And please alert relevant staff via the alert staff members button. The relevant year teams will automatically be alerted. So if you are recording an incident for a student in year nine, the year nine team will instantly get an alert to say that that has happened. Some don'ts. Please don't use full names of members of staff. Please don't write opinion unless it's relevant to what you are talking about and you specify that it is opinion in your entry. Um, there is an assign button on CPOMS which allows you to assign an incident to members of staff. Please don't do that. Nobody should be assigning any incidents to anybody. The relevant staff will see the incident and be able to um, add an action if necessary. 
and please 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 do not use CPOMs as a way of referring safeguarding concerns without speaking to a DSL first you must come and see somebody in person straight away and then we will tell you to record the incident on CPOMs so the next few slides are going to talk about the key themes that are running through this year's version of keeping children safe in education as you can see from the slide there are a few changes that have been implemented this year some of them are only minor changes with wording and things like that but there are a few additions to the guidance as well so one of the changes you need to be aware of is the definition of safeguarding Safeguarding and promoting the welfare of children is defined for the purposes of this guidance as protecting children from maltreatment, preventing impairment of children's mental and physical health or development, ensuring that children grow up in circumstances consistent with the provision of safe and effective care and taking action to enable all children to have the best outcomes. Now, mental health is a key new addition this year. Um, I do think there is going to be an increase in the need for mental health provision given the pandemic and the effect that COVID will have had on some of our students. So the mental health guidelines now state, all staff should also be aware that mental health problems can, in some cases, be an indicator that a child has suffered or is at risk of suffering abuse, neglect or exploitation. Only appropriately trained professionals should attempt to make a diagnosis of a mental health problem Staff, however, are well placed to observe children day to day and identify those whose behaviour suggests that they may be experiencing a mental health problem or at risk of developing one. Where children have experienced abuse or neglect or other potentially traumatic adverse childhood experiences, this can have a lasting effect throughout childhood. Key change is the response to allegations against a member of staff. So important change in the language used anyone working in the school or college including supply teachers and volunteers has behaved in a way that has harmed a child or may harm a child possibly committed a criminal offense against or related to a child behaved towards a child or children in a way that indicates he or she may pose a risk of harm to children or behaved or may behave in a way that indicates they may not be suitable to work with children so the words in bold in that definition are new for this year so in addition to the response to allegations about staff, they have now slightly changed the management of allegations as well. And this now includes transferable risk. So an incident outside of school that did not involve children, but could have an impact on their suitability to work with children. And an example would be an incident of domestic abuse. Sexual exploitation and child criminal exploitation are both given separate emphasis in the new guidance. So both CSA and CCE are forms of abuse and both occur where an individual or group takes advantage of an imbalance in power to coerce, manipulate or deceive a child into sexual or criminal activity. Whilst age may be the most obvious, this power imbalance can be also due to a range of other factors including gender, sexual identity, cognitive ability, physical strength, status and access to economic or other resources. In some cases, the abuse will be in exchange for something the victim needs or wants and or will be to the financial benefit or other advantage, such as increased status of the perpetrator or facilitator. The abuse can be perpetrated by individuals or groups. County lines is something you need to continue to be aware of. And county lines is a term that is used to describe gangs and organised criminal networks involved in exporting illegal drugs, usually high value ones such as crack cocaine and heroin into one or more importing areas within the UK using dedicated mobile phone lines or other form of deal lines. Exploitation is an integral part of the county lines offending model with children and vulnerable adults exploited to move and store drugs and money. Offenders will often use coercion, intimidation, violence, including sexual violence and weapons to ensure compliance of victims. Children can be targeted and recruited into county lines in a number of locations, including schools, Further educational institutions, pupil referral units, special educational needs schools, children's homes and care homes. Children are often recruited to move drugs and money between locations. OK, so all staff have got a responsibility to ensure that they read and fully understand part one of keeping children safe in education. A link to this document will be emailed out to you. 
you must sign the sheet you have been issued to confirm that you've read and understood this guidance. Please try and return the sheets as soon as possible because we will be chasing those that haven't returned the sheets by the end of next week. A quiz will be emailed to all staff in the coming weeks and a winner will be selected at random for a super special mystery prize. Okay, so that is everything from me for today. I have covered quite a lot of information in a relatively short space of time. Um, however, I have left quite a lot of stuff out as well. So if you have any questions or queries, anything at all, please do get in touch. My contact details are on the screen now. So just give me a call or drop me an email anytime is fine. And most importantly, thank you very much for watching and I look forward to meeting all of you.